So on our chart here, we have which is a Kametz Hatuf, short O, or a Kibbutz, and then Ak, Ak, like that. And then we have the same thing here. Tall, right? Uh, and then fortunately, we're missing a bunch, which is nice. Uh, and then we get to go all the way over to the participle, which is mock tall with a long A. Some reason. Uh, so we don't get the. Uh, oh yeah, I guess we do, we do get a U possibly here. So the only stem that we would possibly get that confused with is the Pu'al, because the Pu'al has a U as well. Uh, the difference is in the P in the Pu'al, it uh, there's no hey because it's Pu'al, not Ha'fal. The P-H in Ha'fal is the P from Pu'al. So there's a Ha that comes before the word. It's an actual prefix, Ha'ktal, rather than Ktal. So the P-L does not, or the Pu'al does not actually have a prefix in the perfect. It's just first root letter plus a U. Uh, and then everything else has a, um, a vocal schwa, which is nice, because that's the giveaway. Uh, I put a chart on Canvas, hopefully you all saw it, under uh, the practice. Uh, so I added two things there. Uh, one, I added study cards for Quizlet um, that uh, hopefully you'll find helpful. Uh, and then I also added a little cheat sheet uh, called What to Have Memorized. And this is kind of a version of this chart, sort of. Uh, so it's all of the perfects. It's all of the imperfects. And I put them both in the uh, cutall form and in the uh, pa'al form, if that's helpful for you. Uh, the imperative drops the prefix of the imperfect, and in the nifal and the hifal adds a hey prefix. The infinitive construct in the nifal, the infinitive absolute is kind of a, is very similar to the construct. Construct is just like the imperative to ms, and then the participles almost all start with meta. So uh, all you really need to know is that chart plus the, uh, the clue of the third hay and the clue of the one yod. Because in the hafal, it, for a one yod, it will become a shurik, a full shurik. So we would get Huktal with a long U, Yuktal with a long U, Muktal with a long U. Because that Yod goes back to a Vav, but since it's an O class, U class prefix, it goes to a, a Shurik. Um, Uh, 
Um, yes. Yeah, pretty much. I did not notice that, but yeah, you're right. They are the same. So yeah, you would have to know vocabulary of, if I put a yod on the front of this biconsonantal stem, so if I have kam, yeah. hukam, kof, mem, is it yakam with a yod or is it kum? And yeah, you'd have to know vocab. Uh, and then the other thing you obviously need to know for your exam is um, how participles are used as adjectives. Uh, so just a, a kind of a quick refresher that if it's attributive, then you translate it as an adjective. If it's predicative, then it gets translated uh, more like a, uh, more like a, almost like a pronoun, I guess, where it's its own thing. So the, the predicative, you have to provide the verb. The attributive acts like an adjective. So just remember A, A, and P, P. The P's go with the P's and the A's go with the A's. Uh, and then you need to know your subject markers. And that's about it. So any, any questions in particular on the Hoffel? This is a fairly easy stem because there's only three of them. Concern about you know that it's a common like kibitz pretty easy. Yes. Out, yep. Comments and comments are the exact same. They are. The difference is that a comment hatuf will always be in a closed syllable because it's a short vowel, and a comments will always be in an open syllable because it's a long vowel. So if you'll notice a comments hatuf in hafal, there's a vol or a silent schwa underneath the first root letter. So it's hak tall or hook tall. So the, the kof has to be silent. Has to, it doesn't have a vowel. Whereas any other long vowel uh, or comets would be a open syllable and there would not be a cough with a silent schwa right after it. Um, so, I think where it would be an issue. Um, yeah, so let's say you have um, Yakatil. Although that's a short A. Um, trying to think where we have a long A. Doesn't happen very often. Um, but let's say for some reason that the kof was supposed to take a dagesh or something and it doesn't and you end up lengthening, you'll notice that it's in a, it's either in a, um, it's in a, open syllable or it's in a syllable where there is no mark on that second consonant like an aleph because the aleph has quiesced um, whereas if you have another root letter there it has to have a, a silent schwa to close the comets hatuf so that's where the syllable comes into, so into play be able to tell them all that just means like yes open or closed would tell you Open is long, short is closed. That's the giveaway. Okay, let's go to um, page. Two fifty 
So these are not all Hafal. They're either Hafal or Hifil. And maybe some others, just to keep you on your toes. Yes. So number one, what is the stem? Ha Amid. What kind of vowel do we have underneath the prefix? A segol, which is technically a A, I, or U. Well, it's E, but yeah. I, yes, so it's in the I class. So when do we get an I class vowel underneath a hey at the beginning as a prefix to a word? There's only two stems that we get that in. Hifil, and what's the other one? A nifal, yep. But an ifal won't do it in the perfect, it'll only do it in the imperative or the infinitive. So I look at this and I know that in the infinitive or in the uh, uh, imperative in a nifal, my second letter is always comments. But here it's vocal schwa. So I know this is not a nifal, so it has to be a hifil. And I can confirm that because of the hiric yod after the mem. That's kind of a giveaway. What about number two on page 259? Ya Amid. I got a preformative with a patak. So which stem is that? Yes, hifil imperfect, yep. I've got on the Quizlets, I've got um, uh, a series of questions. So I think, you know, one of them says, uh, so I have a, I have a patak under my prefix. Yeah. What am I? I have a kamatatuf under my prefix. What am I? I have a, a mem with a vocal schwa. What am I? Um, so those are just good. To, Good to know. Uh, number three is the same as number two. The difference is because of the shifting of the accent, because the vaya, the, the vayak toll tends to shift the accent either forward or backward or, um, so this is, instead of ya'amid, it's ya'amid. But it's the same, it's still hifil. So sometimes that here at Yod becomes a say rate depending on what else is going on in the word. How about number six? What is under the second root letter? Uh huh. Yes, it's a compound schwa, so hatef comments or so. Yep. Right. So a comment before a hatef comments is always a comments hatuf, which is nice. And comments hatuf has to be has to be a hapa. What about number seven? Um, hmm. Yeah, number seven, I think what happened is you have a, um, 
you have a comets or a Hatef comets under the ion, uh, the compound schwa, but then you have to reduce the patak that was under the mem and make that also a compound schwa or make that a schwa. But when you do that, then you end up with a vocal schwa followed by a vocal schwa, which you can't have. So then the ion drops the, um, it drops the vocal schwa and just goes with the comatative. I believe they're both, excuse me, I believe they're both comatative. Oh my God, I was going to die. I was so confused as to what was happening. Mm -hmm. that is the, is the, is the or is it a doggish yep. So how is it a short vowel and open? Yeah, it's, it's a weird one. I'm trying to find the, uh, where am I? So I wasn't off to initially, I think it was just radio. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, but let me see. Ah, here we go. I think this is it, maybe. Nope. I've got to label these better. Um, this was okay, so this is a This is a two F. It's not going to tell me here. It's uh, not really giving me the. Yeah, I was trying to find the, but I can't. It would be under the section of his chapter where he's dealing with. Um, it'd be in chapter thirty-three in the section where he's dealing with the uh, Hoffal um, gutturals. If 
find the part where it references why it's doing this. Yeah, I hate when he gives you an example and then doesn't explain why it's doing it. He doesn't say anything about anything interesting about the world that you can figure out this chapter in verse four. Like, here's the Yeah, that's possible. He's been known to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oops. Thing here. Oops. Yeah, it's just not uh, really giving it to me here. Yeah, I'm, I'll have to go and look that one up. I'm not sure. Maybe this is why he has a third edition. Yes. Oh, I'm sure he thinks he's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I mean, it, you can still figure out that it's a Hoffel Imperfect 2FS, but as to why, I don't know. That's the obnoxious yeah, part of it. Yeah, my question would be, is it a contact? I mean, a comment, or is it a comment that's just written for the line, but other than that, it would be taken out? It's just weird. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, Especially it's since pretty much the only one I see that does that. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Well, he's got it in both places on both his answer chart and here. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to do some digging on that one, figure out why, why that is the way it is. How about number eight? Mm-hmm. How about participle? Uh, how about number 12? Anybody? Uh, yep, because you've got the closed syllable there at the beginning. Yep, so why is there a yod? I don't know. Okay, what is missing from the stem? We've got gimid lamel, gimid lamel, gimel lamed. Hey, should be a hey but hey before a tav or a nun will become a yod, which is why we have the leta. How about number um, 15? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, what about nineteen? Mm-hmm. Hip hill participle and masculine or feminine? Feminine, yep. Uh what about number twenty-three? It is a hafal. Hafal what? Perfect. Not a perfect. Uh, it's not. No. Nope. Not imperative either. When we have a mem. Oh, participle. Participle. Yes. Where is the third root letter? Yes, and it ran away. Yes. It did run away. It's in the tzade. Yep, that's what the dagesh forte is. Is it nun? Nun, yep. Yep, so it should be not tzav. There is a word tzava, I think. I know we've said that word multiple times. My brain never hears it. Which one? Tzava. Like tzava. We use it multiple examples, and my brain is like, what? Yeah, okay. I'm drawing a blank right now. And 
what it is. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I want to say it's possibly to burn. Saba, sade be, hey. But if it was a hey at the end, the hey would be there and it would be segol hey, because that's what a participle does with the hey, third hey verb. So the fact that there's no hey here and the dagesh forte in the sade tells us that it must be a nun, a nun stem. Um, with a with a hey, or is that with an aleph? Um, uh, according to this, according to, uh, oh, it's not the word I thought it was, uh, it occurs three times. It means to swell. Um, and it is used to refer to an adulteress's belly. That is very specific. So it's like three times? Yeah. It's, so it's the word in numbers when the woman drinks the dust that's off the floor of the temple. Her belly will sava, it will swell. Um, which surprised me, I could have sworn it was something else, but apparently not. Well, it's just, that's the only time it shows up. It shows up again in Isaiah having to do with, uh, again, the adulterous belly. Um, just that a different word might be used for a not adulterous. But I guess I can't think of any places where the Bible says that her belly is well. Yeah, that's, well, usually swelling, um, yeah, usually it's a, it's a swollen belly is usually a different word. Um, Yep, no, that's it. Huh, that's not the one I was thinking of. I wonder if I'm thinking of Safa. Maybe that's the Kindle or Burn. So, okay, any other questions on? Uh... Actually, let's, uh, let's do page 261, just for the fun of it, since we're here. Uh, how about number number one? Uh, well, it could, but he says call Andrew Rapston. Yes. I don't trust so if you glance down at number one, two, three, four, five, they're all the same verb. So you know what the stem is. It's Aleph Chet Zion, Achaz, which means means to seize or to grasp. So you know that in number one, the first root letter is Aleph. However, there's a vocal schwa underneath. Now, when do vowels reduce? It could be, it's an option. Yeah, um, so it, it could be that. Um, what's that? No, it, it could. I mean, this could be katol. Um, 
but I was actually thinking it could also, oops. Um, well, I had been thinking that it could also be a, um, an imperfect, but that would just be Segel. It wouldn't be a compound schwa. So yes, it would, it would be an imperative or an infinitive construct would be the best option because of the... And ordinarily, you use the rest of the sentence to tell you whether it was... Correct, imperative. to tell you if it was imperative or infinitive construct. Yep. So if it was a... Um, you could have a uh, just an aleph with a segel, and then it would be an imperfect, but not a compound segel. What, what happens because the aleph is part of the root? Uh, I think they just combine. I believe. Um, I can. I knew that. that That's the wrong lesson. That's what I want. Well, uh, 13, 14. So are the stages two in mass? Yes. Um, so sometimes in the uh, imperfect with two alephs, two alephs may appear. So it may be aleph, aleph, or the aleph may take a holum. Yeah, so if it's, if it's a, um, if it's a normal one CS imperfect, then it would be aleph segel, then aleph with a <clears throat> hot tough segel and the holum. So the aleph with the segel has just dropped off the front here. If they combine, then it combines as a aleph with a holum, and then it usually has a patak under the second root letter. Like um, Omar is to say, or I said Omar, because uh, it's that angry baker type. Um, so Ahaz, I is sometimes a angry baker bird. Depends on if it feels like it or not. It actually goes both ways. So in this particular case, it is not an angry baker bird, but sometimes it acts like an angry baker bird. So I may seize you and you will perish, uh, but it may, I may not seize you because I may not be an angry baker bird. So seize goes both ways. Uh, Yes, but you are right. This would be uh, an imperative or an infinite construct. What about number two? Mm -hmm. Co-tail. Uh, so it is a participle. Number three, a who's. What kind of participle though? Passive participle, yes. So number number three is the passive participle. Uh, number four. Number three is the passive participle. Yes, ahuz. Yeah. So in the active participle, it's co-tail. In the uh, in the passive, it's katul. Okay, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Number four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
anything have to happen to make it exciting? Yes. So where do we normally get to hear it from? Remember, historically, the heric is caused by a schwa hitting the compound schwa, or hitting two schwas in a row, and the first one becomes a heric. That's where the heric usually comes from. But here, it doesn't become a heric. It becomes the vowel of the compound schwa. So this is just a standard, standard nifal. So it's just nifal. Mm-hmm. What about number five? Number five is really mean because the only difference is that long vowel. So in the cow or in the nifal perfect, it's nifal. So is that a long A or a short A? Short A. So it's it'd be participle. Yep. So nifal is the perfect. In the participle, it goes long. Why? Who knows? Why not? Um, in, let's see, number, what number six? Yes, one CS. Yep. So the nun from the nifal has assimilated into the bait. And we know it's a nifal because we have a comets in our second second root letter. How about number eight by Yibin? Mm, no, no, mm -mm. no, it's bana, and the hay has just dropped off. It's very evil, very, very evil. Yeah, oftentimes the uh, the the uh, it'll stick around so that you know that it's a third hay verb. Um, but for whatever reason, that's not always the case. Um, let's see here. Uh, Uh, this is just a cal imperfect. Um, I can't find my. There we go. So how's the old first? Um, so usually it's yiv ne, and it ends in segel hey, but when you put the Vyaktol in the beginning, all the accents go weird. 
and that's why you end up with um, this weird, weird form. Um, that's not it either. Where did I put it? Oh, it's going to open up the lesson here and I can't find it. Ah, here we go. Um, so, uh, in biconsonantal and third verb forms, they are shortened in consecutive imperfect forms when they don't have a prefix or, or a suffix. So with biconsonantal verbs, the middle vowel will drop out. So yakum becomes vayakom. Yasim becomes Vayasem, and he will build becomes, instead of Yivne, becomes Vayibin, and Gala, which is Yigle, becomes Vayigl. Yeah, so this is just a Cal form. And one of the ways that you can get at this is. Um, recognizing that uh, there is no other form that it could be. So you could actually make the argument that this is also a Joseph. Um, because the Vayak Tol takes the Joseph form, takes that shortened form. Uh, what about number nine, Ga'ulim? What jumps out at you on that one? Okay, so if it's got an eem ending, then it's probably Well, is that a noun ending or a verb ending? Hirik yod mem. That's a noun mm -hmm. Yep. So you could have, um, yeah, that'd be too confusing. I don't even know that that form exists. Uh, you'd have to have a weird combination of of, uh, yeah, I don't even think that would exist then. So this is a noun ending. It's a masculine plural noun ending on a verb. So what kind of verb is this? To have a noun ending on a verb. Participle. What kind of participle? It'd be passive because you got a shurik right in the middle of it. Just very so yes. So the the shurik is there to mark the passive. Yes. The hirik yod mem is there because it's a masculine plural passive. Right. So the gimel, the aleph, and the lamed, that's the root, ga'al. Is the uh, It quiesces. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't quite ask it. It just, it gets the mark next to it. So yeah. it looks different. Yep. Uh, what about number 10? I think the line is preposition. Okay, so if there's a preposition, then what is this? What form? No, no, you're right. So what form do we put in a preposition on?
You sure? No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, it's an infinitive construct is the one that we put it on. So that's the difference between the construct and the absolute. The construct can take prepositions and it can take objects, whereas the absolute cannot. So what else is going on here then? What type of, what stem is this? What's my first letter? I'm trying to figure out why it says K is a part of it. Is it the, what the stem is, like what's actually a part of the word? Because this just seems like it's way too many letters. Okay, so well, says, if you have a hey with a patak, then what could it be? It could just be the definitive R. It's an active subject for the reason. I'm sorry. And then the. Yes. So if it was the definite article, the definite article would be under the lamed. Because when you put lamed on the front of a word with a definite article, it takes the vowels of the definite article and then the definite article drops. Uh, what about number... What about number 11? Okay, if it's an ending, then what kind of ending is it? T is... That would just be E or me. This is T. T is a subject ending. It's a perfect one CS ending. Would so this be nifal, nifal, perfect? Mm -hmm. And what is the root? Uh-huh, and? Maybe a hay? And a hay, yes, because the hay drops off, becomes the yod before tav. So what about number 12? It is a perfect. What is the stem? Is it also it, That's the root. What about the, what stem is it? Sorry. <laughs> it's crazy, but there's a clue in there. There's a dogish. Pia. Yep. And that's from the dogish forte. Because Lama doesn't take Lina. Yeah. Uh, how about 14? What is the root? Mm -hmm. Yep. What, uh, when we make the first letter in a, or the performative in a, uh, in an imperfect, when we make it a hyric, why is it able to keep the hyric? Because what type of vowel is hyric? Short. Short. So in all the examples that are up here, 
why are we able to keep short vowels in some of these preformatives in the imperfect? Short I, short I, short, well, nothing. Short A, short O, short U, because they're closed syllables. So if I have halak and I have yod hirik, what closes that first syllable? A shva under what letter? Under halak. What, what would be? Uh, not the lamed. Halak. It would be the first root letter, so it would be the hey. So you'd have yih lok. Problem is, the hey drops. So it's, no, it's not there to close the syllable, which is why it has to become a seire. I think that is just certain certain verbs do that. I especially one yod verbs or or yod words that have yod as the first letter of the stem. So uh, I'm trying to think of an example. So to uh, he gave uh, she gave no well he gave birth he bore yeled or yeled yeled. Uh, you end up with yod. Seire, Lamed, Seire, Dalit, Yeled from Yalad. So it's just a very common pattern with one yod verbs. And for whatever reason, Halak is convinced it's a one yod verb. So it follows the same pattern and throws that Seire into the second root because we would expect a whole one. So this is just a cow. It's just a cow imperfect. How would you spell it? Yep. So in a uh, in a nifal, you would have to put a dagesh somewhere, and it would probably it would probably stay in the in the hay, and so you'd probably get yeha yeha lake. Um, well, no, they wouldn't. So you'd get, but you would still have to have, you, you have to have the, the, the comments. Um, my guess is just because of what the word is that uh, he was walked. I'm guessing that they just simply don't use a passive form of it. So I'm, I'm willing to bet it doesn't show up in the, in the NIFAL. No, because that's that's kind of where we the only place that we use it. Yeah. I take it back. It, uh, it does show up in the NIFL. Oh, it does. It does. Yep. Um, so. Let me see if I can let me do this last time. You know, I'm not seeing it. Um, yeah, to lead, to bring, to lead away, to carry, to cause, to walk. Um, See if I can find a lexicon here. I don't think they're going to show me. Obnoxious. Oh. Uh, come on, come on. What did we say it was? Yod. Um.
Uh, actually, in uh, well, that's that would be a hit fail. Yeah, it looks like the hay comes back. If it's a uh, if it's a nifal, although I'm not really showing it to me here. Yeah, so it might be yay halak or yay yay halak. Um, Sorry, Jamie, I'm being irritating person who has all these questions. That's all right. Yeah, I, I thought there was an online. Uh, yeah, I was looking at a. A um, hmm. yeah, I was looking at a lexicon the other day, and and for whatever reason, popping up. I don't even know which one I was using. Yeah, they may just be, um, they just may be standard. Yeah, I don't know. What did we say this was? Yeah. Well, he, he, it all says that he, yeah, hello, that would be it. Oh, right. Yeah, maybe this particular form just doesn't show up in the Bible because I'm not seeing a, Yeah, I don't know. Everything says NIFAL, but it must not be 3MS NIFAL, which is odd. But is seven a NIFAL in the context? Seven? Uh, yes, from Bana. Seven is a NIFAL, in, or NIFAL infinitive construct. Um, yeah, he goes straight from the Hifil into the peel. Ah, here we go. Um, yeah, it looks like the only place that it shows up in the Nifal is in Psalm 109.23. So...
doesn't really seem like it shows up very many times other than that. Yeah. Um, okay, how about number 16? Mm -hmm. Number 16. Okay, well, he said it. And I was like, thanks. No, number 16. You sure? I thought the first. What letter is that on number 16, that first letter? No, it's a hate. Yep. Yep. So this is a just a comments. Yep. And it ends in new. Oh, so is probably in. It is. My brain is like, what? What ends in new? Yes, from anachnu, which is we or us. So this is one CP. So when do we have comments under our first root letter ending in a new? Mm -hmm. Cal, what? Cal perfect, yep. Yep. Um, Number 19. You don't like it? <laughs> not today. No, not doing it. Perfect? No. If it was a hafal, what would be the whole above? It would be a shirk. It would be a shirk. Yep. My brain thought it was a shirk. No, that's all right. This is a. I can't figure out this new. That's the new is not one But you know, if the noon isn't a part of it, mm -hmm. then it's just a bi continental? No. No, it's this no, this yeah, it's yada, right? It's part of the Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's from Yada. So is this just a? I just get programmed. Mm -hmm. It's just a perfect, perfect NIFAL three MS. Because the NIFAL doesn't need to have here under it; it just got a vowel next to it. That's the weird. Is that right? Uh huh. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So that is the vowel.
my friend was like, the hearing cannot possibly link them to a whole <laughs> So there's no way. What about number 21? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, NIF Allen perfect, 3MS, because the VAV is acting as a full consonant. So it's only in the perfect that it acts like a vowel, the whole and VAV. Everywhere else, it's a full VAV. Um, how about... Uh, How about 25? It's a participle. It is a participle. It's got a vocal schwa underneath it, followed by a patak. So what kind of participle? What's that? PL. PL, very good. And one more piece of information. Feminine or masculine? Feminine. Singular or plural? Very good. What about uh, 20, 22? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, cow, one CS. This is a third hay verb again, kala. So the hay has become a yod in between the lamed and the tav. Same with 23, except 23 is a PL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what people who speak, uh, who are learning English say too. Mm -hmm. at, least, at least Hebrew is uh, patterned. Yeah. All right, well, if you want to flip to 287. Um, and I, um, I can't remember where we stopped. We stopped at the end of verse seven, I think. Um, so Joseph dreamed a dream and he told his brothers and they added hatred to him even more. And he said to them, uh, listen, please, um, to the dream, this dream, which I dreamed, behold, we were, uh, out in, we were with the standing grain sheaving sheaves in the midst of the field, and behold, uh, my sheave rode up, rose up, and it stood up, and behold, uh, all of yours uh, sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down uh, to my sheaf. Uh, did we do verse eight? I don't. I 
I don't think so. Okay. I think that's where we stop, but I also need to percent that is on my office. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> it's not that bad. So beginning in verse 8 on page 287, and they said, because we've got the yod on the front and the shurik on the end, so this would be a 3MP. And they said, lo. No, no something. Uh, this would not be no. No would be Lamed Aleph. This is Lamed plus Holom Vav. So they said, this is to him. Because oh. it's a 3MS pronoun. They said to him, Echav, from Ach. So my brother, but it's usually, we usually have a, because possessives are in construct with the noun. So we think of it like a Seire Yod is kind of why you have the Yod there except that the vowel is not always say ray with a noun and a possessive pronoun. If it's a hiric, that means it's a singular noun. So it'd be a would be my or his brother. Anything else, any other vowel, in this case, a comets, a chav is a plural brother. So this is his brothers because it's, it's the vav and the vav sometimes has a vowel, like in the previous word, lo, yeah. and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it all depends on if it's, usually if it's on a, like a possessive like this, it will not have a vowel because it will take, it'll just finish whatever the hiric or whatever the yod was doing. And so, did we, did we, cover that in the first we did, we covered this, let's see, weeks, less than seven, six or seven. So, um, yes, so we, uh, when we talked about adding, let's see, it would have been, yeah, week, week seven, lesson seven, if you go back in your notes or the PDFs to lesson seven. Um, Achiv is his brother, Achav is his brothers. So you can remember it as everything with a Hiric Yod is singular. Everything with a different vowel and a hiric is plural. And it generally only matters in the single, single syllable words like ach or av. Um, so his father is aviv. Um, you see. Yeah, so if you flip over the next page on uh, verse 10, via Sefer El Aviv. Uh, ya Sefer, he reported or he told El to Aviv, his father. But if it was Avav, it would be his father's. So the Hiric Yod tells you that it's, it's singular, a singular noun, whereas anything else is plural. So that's why this is brothers, Echav. Uh, ha Malok. So he said to his brothers, or excuse me, his brothers said to him, Ha Malok. Yes. So king is melek, but this is not a noun. This is a verb, which is why it's malok. So this is the ruler, right? Yep. 
and it's a Comets with a uh, holum, not a schwa with a holum. Infinitive absolute. So with a, what's on the front? Not definite article. Interrogative, very good. So an interrogative does not mess with its absoluteness because it's not in construct. It's not, it's not having anything done to it. So you can negate it or you can add a question mark without changing its absolute nature. So you don't have to use an infinitive construct because it's not a, there's no object and there's no preposition. And the definite article is just the. So it doesn't actually affect anything other than translation, which is why it's still um, not definite article, interrogative, which is why it's still able to be the infinitive absolute. So uh, why do we sometimes, because you see the next one is Tim Loke, which is a imperfect. Why do we sometimes put an infinitive absolute in front of a imperfect? Mm -hmm. Yes, emphasis. So this would be surely. Will you surely rule Alenu over us? Or will you indeed rule over us? So this is the Hebrew equivalent of over my dead body. Uh, this is this is not this is not gonna. Are you gonna rule over us? Are you really gonna rule over us? Uh, no, no. Uh, Im. What is Im? Im. Yep. Aleph Mem. This is kind of like a uh, uh, if would be kind of a loose, a loose translation of it. Um, so I'm sure all the English translations do it a little bit differently. Uh, a lot of translations translated as or. or okay. Yeah, it's not or, but it could act as or. If is usually more common, but but it it's almost like there's two questions here, but all part of the same question. So the question mark is not repeated, but im kind of communicates yes. that the question continues because then it's mashol tim shol. So what is mashol? Mm-hmm. Yep, so it's an infinitive absolute again. Oh, so they're like, are you going to roll, roll, like really roll, roll? Yep. Um, and then, yeah, Tim Scholl, you will rule. So are you really going to reign over us or really rule over us? Yep. And you'll notice what's interesting in Hebrew, and this gets into really advanced grammar, is that different words take different prepositions. So to rule over is al, alenu, rule over us, alenu. But mashol, to rule, takes bait, banu. We rule over us. So just like um, to listen to with a lamed is to listen to something. Uh, usually though, a to listen, and then if the next word starts with a bait, it, usually you translate the listen as to obey because it's a different, the different preposition kind of gives it a different character. Um, uh, so, vayo sifu. Uh-huh. Yep, from Yasaf. 
What does Joseph's name mean? <laughs> to add or repeat? Yes, because she, Rachel, that's Rachel's first son. And she wants another one. So may God add to me another, Joseph. So we're having some play on words here in Genesis 37 because he's, Moses is writing here and he's saying all this Yasaf and Yosifu about Yosef, which is deliberate. He's, he's being clever or witty. He thinks he's being funny, yes. By Yosifu, like, 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 yes. So they added or they repeated or increased Od Sane Oto. Od is again. And then Sane is. Uh huh. Yes. But yo sifu od saneato. Saneo sano oto. Yes. So sano is. What form is that? It's from sane, but what form is this? Sano. It looks like an imperative. It does look like an imperative. It could be, but what else has the same form as the imperative? The imperative 2MS and the infinitive construct, yep. So they in, increased again to hating him. Uh, al, which is upon, or perhaps on account of, or because, ha holomotav. What's a holom? A dream. So this is halomot dreams. dreams tav. Ends in a vav. Oh. Whose dreams? His. his dreams. Yep. So they hated him all the more because of his dreams. Vaal and on account of Davarav. His words. His words. Yep. Vaya halom od halom. Halom? What is halom? Dream? So vaya halom. He dreamed. Yep. And what is, what form is that? Mm hmm Yes. So this is a little tricky. This is, this is sneaky. This is not a hifiel, even though it's got the patak under the yod. And the giveaway for that is the fact that we have a, the patak, hat, hat, the hatef patak underneath the chait, which causes the yod, instead of having a hirik, to have the patak and his confirmation, there's the holum over the lamed, which tells us this is yik tol. So it's a little tricky. We can't just go on the yod here, having a patak, which would be a hifiel. We've got to give it a little more thought than that. So he dreamed again, halom, a dream, a hair. That's a share. Yeah, this is another. another. Yep, so he dreamed another dream. Uh, via Safer. Safer from Safer is a scroll, so this is to record or to tell or to relate. Oto. Mm -hmm. So this is, is what is Oat?
When we see Aleph Tav, what do we often think it is? With or direct object. And since this is an O, Oat, it's the direct object, and the whole Vav is the 3MS preposition, or a pronoun. So this is, he told, he told him, uh, or it could be he related it. And it, it could really go either way. Um, the fact that it's followed by uh, Le'echav. Um, well, I'm guessing that's why he related it. He related the dream to his brothers. Because you're right, there is no him. If it was uh, Oto and then it was father, that's possible. Although it'd still be interesting duplication because usually you just put Oat and then you'd have Oat plus father. Or actually, you wouldn't even have Oat. You'd have eight plus father. So the fact that you have Oto, but there's no him or it other than the dream. This is probably the dream. So he related the dream to his brothers, Vayomer, and he said, Hene, I'm old. Is that what you said? Oh, I'm old. I think he said, Hene, I'm old. Yes. Halamti. Halamti Halom. Dream. Yes, this is very Le Miz here. I dreamed a dream, right? That's Le Miz. I dreamed a dream. Yes. Yes, in brilliant colors. Ode. Yeah. Halom ti halom ode. Yeah, it doesn't quite sound the same. Uh, it kind of works though. It does, kind of. Kind of. The Hebrew version, I'm sure, is halom ti halom. Yeah. Uh, Vahene. Hashemesh. Shemesh. This is sun. Yes, sunlight. Sun or sunlight, yep. So Shemesh Vahareach. And the moon. Sun and the moon. Vahad Asar. What is Ahad? One, and what is Asar? This is where my brain is, what should be coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, like, yes. This is where it should be, but I'm well, what do you think it should be? The sun, the moon, the stars out there. And how many stars? One, 12. Not 12. Uh, 11. 11. So Asar is 10. And echad is one, so one ten. Eleven kokavim. That stars. That stars. Mashitahavim. Excuse me. Mish tahavim. So he's got a mem on the front. So it must be a participle. And it ends in hirik yod mem. So it must be what kind of participle? Ma masculine plural. And it's got way too many letters here, so it must be a hithbio. And you'll learn this on Tuesday, but when you have, yep. So there are some people who believe that there used to be an ancient hishtafel, um, but uh, if you've ever watched the, uh, there's, um, there is a video online, I am the very model of a biblical philologist, which is uh, to the tune of the Pirates of Penzance. I am the something general. I am the very model of a something, I don't know. A group of PhD students in Britain got bored and did, I am the very model of a biblical philologist. And at one point, because he's, you know, he's chanting to himself in between the verses and he's going, you know, Hithafel, Hishtafel, Hippafel, you know, he's, he's chanting all the different, yeah. Um, yeah. 
So this is the, the Hishtafel, the, the Shin and the Tav switch. Uh, and Shin, basically anything that starts with an S. So Shin, Sin, Samik, and Sade will often do that. The difference with Sade is that they switch and then the Tav becomes a Tate. Yes, and then the symbolized phase is switch. Yes, yep, the rest of them, yep. Um, so the, uh, the sun, the moon, 11 stars bowed down Lee me. to me, uh, by a Safer or by a Safer. This is that Sefer record, relate, retell El Aviv. Uh, his, father. his father. Yep, the Yod, here Yod is just a connector there. Oh, okay. To his father, the El Echav, the Yig Ar, the Yig Ar Bo. Uh, to repute is. Oh, there's a little S setting. Yes. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Wait, is this one of those ones? It is, yep. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, his, his father rebuked him, Aviv. So, Yegarbo Aviv, his father rebuked him. Or it could be even his father rebuked him on account of it. Um, Vayomer, this is his father talking, his father, Lo, said lo, this is the preposition again, to him. Oh yeah, to him. To him, ma, what? Ma, what? Ma ha halom hazeh. Something to this. Yes. Uh, so Yep. Well, halom is just dream. So the dream, this dream, ma ha halom has that. What is this dream? What is this dream? Asher. Yep. Halamta. Mm -hmm. Habo. You got hey plus a vocal schwa. What is that? Yep. And then Bo is the infinitive absolute. Navo, which is a um yeah um. Well, my first guess was that it, it, it probably, it probably is a Cal imperfect one CP. Instead of a here, it gets in the, yeah, because we get uh, like the Yakum or um, instead of Yakum, a uh, Yakum, the, the biconsonantals or the geminates will take in the cal, in the imperfect will take a comments under the preformative. So will we surely come? Ani. This is a shortened form of anoki. Uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. Vaimka. Aim. It's an aim. This is your mother. The aim. So when it goes into construct with the ka, this is im imka, but imka, but imka. Your mother. Um, this is an interesting question because it suggests that Rachel's still alive, maybe. 
which is odd because we don't get the impression that Rachel's still alive. But it's also possible because I don't know, let's see, does it say how old Joseph is? Um, yeah, Joseph was 17 years old and was pasturing the flock with his brothers. He was a boy with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought a bad report to his brothers, of his brothers to his father. So it's odd because it's, it sounds like she's dead based on the chronology of the story, but this makes it sound like she's not dead, but he had a dream that she was bowing down to him, which is not possible because she's dead. So she's never gonna bow down to him. So you kind of have to use some imagination here of Jacob gets what the dream is saying, but he's not really taking it. I don't think he's really taking it literally, even though he's interpreting it as father, mother, and all the brothers, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars. But even within that analogy, the moon, the mother, is not the mother of all 11 stars. So, because there's actually the moon, there's four moons. There's the sun, four moons, and 11 stars. So, and, and a sister, at least one sister. And, and at another point, he talks about having daughters. So, at least two stars, but they don't count. So, you, you kind of have to, you get what it's saying. So I don't think this is saying that she's still alive. I think he's just going with the, you know, he's under somebody's, you know, there's some woman taking care of him. It's not, you know, he's not, well, your mom's dead. Sorry. Now you're on your own shoe. It's, you know, yeah, he's, you know, there's Leah, there's Bilha, there's Zilpa. They're all taking care of him. Um, so will your, will I and your mother, Vahecha, and your brothers, yep. And again, it's something other than a hierarch. So it's gotta be a plural. La hishtaha, I can't even say it. La hishtaha oat. So you don't know what that root is. It is a hithpael. And what do you see on the front? Mm -hmm. So it must be a, yeah, and what form takes prepositions? Uh, not absolute. Construct. And if it's an infinitive, uh, infinitive construct and it ends in oat, what type of stem must it be? A third hay. Yes. So if we know that this is a, Hithtafel or a hittafel, we shafa is to bow down. It never shows up outside the hith hitpael. It's always hitpael. Um, so sometimes on your vocab cards it'll say shaha, but it never shows up as shaha. Um, so will we surely come, your mom, me, your brothers, to bow down lacha? to you, artsa, to the ground. And it's got the directive hey on artsa. So this is Eretz. And normally there would be, yeah, will we bow down to you on the ground, to the ground, with our heads to the ground? Um, Vayakanu, no, nope. Vayakan, yeah, Vayakan U. Although with the meth egg there, we sometimes slur it all together. So it's Vakanu Bo. Um, uh huh. Bo over it or over him. Uh, echav. Mm hmm. Vaaviv. Shamar. 
Uh, nope, it's father, because it's Eve, Eric Yod. Yep, and his father, Shamar. Kept or guarded. Et Hadavar. Probably kept the word. So he kind of remembers these things, as it were. Very similar. Yep. Yeah, the NIV or the ESV says his father kept the saying in mind, which is a very smooth way of, yeah. But it, it is almost identical to the stored up these things in our heart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, this is where it gets ridiculous because uh, so Jacob has heard all of this. And he's remembering all this, and yet uh, he's still going to do something really stupid. Um, so, Vayelku, yes, very good, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, a lock to go. But it's got yod on the front and a shurik on the end. He, it's yod on the front. They, they, they went. Echav. Who went? Echav. The brothers. Yes, the brothers went. Lirot. Mm -hmm. To pasture. To yes. pasture. Yes. Et tone. The sheep. The sheep, the flocks of sheep. Avihem. Not the not your. That'd be Kem. This is Hem. So it's their father. Yep. So the flock of their father. Yep. And the punctuation is missing because he took it all out. So you can't tell that zone goes with Avihem. Uh, Bishkem. What is bait? Uh, bait is competition. Yep, meaning? To yes, so in... Yep, so this is Shechem, in Shechem. Yep. Um, so they're not in Shechem. Okay, they're going toward it. Um, it's possible they're going towards it. It's likely that they've already left it. So, you know, they've already gone. They, you know, when they were traveling, they came through Shechem in chapter 36, and that's where Dinah got raped. And then they destroyed it, put them all to the sword. So this is afterwards. So they're kind of going back to their area now because they own it now. So going back to Shechem. Um, so that again makes me think this is all after Rachel died because she died on the way to Shechem before they left Shechem after Dinah's incident and went on. Voyomer um, uh, Yisrael. El Yosef. Hello. He said, hello. It's a little, little Hebrew joke. This is like, oh. yes, are not, are not a heka. Mm -hmm. Roim. It's just like ra'ot, but it's a participle form. So instead of Leah wrote up in the next the line above to shepherd, this is Roim shepherding or pasturing Bishkem. Yep. Laka. It is 
it is not a preposition. It is actually a imperative from halak. Yep, laka. And again, sometimes imperatives have that kamate on them. Doesn't change the meaning at all. It just, it does. Um, Va'esh lahaka. Mm -hmm. one yes, one CS from Shalach, which means yes. So Eshla Esh Laha Ka. I will send you Alehem to them. The Yomer. He said. He said. Lo. Him, Hineni. Hine, behold me. behold me, here I am. So Joseph's saying, I got it. Hineni, yes, I like that, I like that phrase, Hineni. It used to be, it was a song in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, Hineni. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. All right, well, that's uh, all the time we have. So. What's that? Yes, end on behold me. Hanani, behold me. Yes. Jamie, have a good night. Thank you. You too. I will see you on uh, Tuesday. All right. God bless. <laughs>